is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. In terms of negotiating for the players over the course of its existence since 1966, whether you talk pensions, whether you talk guaranteed contracts, all of those things. And they're, they're not going to all of a sudden just turn over and say, okay, forget everything we've done and uh, we'll, we'll do whatever you guys want. So I think that they're fighting for their, for their union, their players. And I, did, I would never suspect them of doing anything less and look, owners are going to have to all give, and I know that to a large degree they have, but when you see that a majority of the pay is going to be backloaded if there is a postseason, because that's where the owners receive a, the biggest chunk of their money from the national networks, uh, that, that tells you right there that they also probably think, we may be able to start this thing, but we don't know that we're going to be able to keep it going. And that's, that's I think, the issue the players are having. Now, now, for the record, my brother, I was saying it because I just would like to see them come to some kind of an agreement. I'm we actually, all would. We all I'm, would. I'm actually on the player's side on this one. I agree with a lot of the things you were saying. I'm blaming, actually, the fact that this isn't going more smooth on the owners more than anything else. I, I don't believe Mike Trout should take a 70% pay cut. That's ridiculous. I mean, he's the guy that puts the butts in the seats. So I, I, you know, I completely understand what the way they're going about. My, my, my question to you is, why is it so adversarial, and why is why don't the owners kind of understand that they keep losing traction every year, and it's super important for them to stay in front of of the public, and and you know, I heard Passon say that. You know, there's a part of him that says some owners are saying, let's punt on the 2020 season. Yeah. That, that, would, yeah. Be, that would be suicidal for this league. Baseball is headed in the direction of hockey, bro. It's going to become a niche sport before you know it. And that's crazy to think that America's pastime will end up becoming a niche sport 10 to 20 years from now. Yeah, I'm not entirely convinced of that. I think that uh, you still have national television contracts, which the NHL does not have. The NHL is the one league that is in really deep trouble if they don't play next season because they just don't have the capital underneath them. I understand Whereas that. Major League Baseball does. Baseball still has national appeal. They have national contracts. So that keeps baseball far more relevant, but I'm not disagreeing that it is, uh, you know, it's not going to be good if there is no season. And look, it, it, it would be a disaster if they don't play this year, but it would also be a disaster if like, let's say next year games are going to be played, but with 20% fans in attendance, 25% fans in attendance, that's also a disaster the collective bargaining agreement, the current one, expires at the end of next year. So after the 2021 season, and you know you start negotiating those things well, well in advance. They were already starting those negotiations. This threw a wrench into everything. So now we're seeing where the next CBA could absolutely bring the game to its knees. And well, that, that, that's what it, I, it, it, dude. That's what I was going to counter with you, Pedro, because. When I hear baseball people tell me, well, you know, teams are still worth billions and there's still big TV contracts, My, uh, that's going to dry up. The, those contracts, there is no way, it doesn't make any sense to me that these TV uh, uh, companies are going to keep paying these amounts of money to baseball when the less interest, less people are watching, you have, you know, less people, period, interested in the sport overall. I, football and basketball, I can see it. I can see soccer growing before my eyes. Baseball, I see it. I don't see it growing at all. So that money that people keep talking about, that next contract, I don't think it's topping the last one. I think it's going to start taking a step back. And what you were talking about, that it could bring baseball to its knees, I think that's where it really starts on that next CBA I think that next TV deal is not going to be nearly as big as the last one, and we're going to now see baseball – literally take those financial steps backwards. Yeah, but the problem is that the CBA is not tied to the TV contracts. The TV contracts, I believe the current ones, 
are in place for the next six to eight years. One of them might even be 10 years. So that money is there. That's locked, right, in, locked in for that on one. that front. Yeah, the CBA is not linked into the TV deal whatsoever. So that, that, that's locked in. The regional TV deals, those are the ones that are a little more, you know, that, that clubs do get a lot of revenue from those local regional network deals. Like the Marlins, uh, they're in, in South Florida, and their TV deal is up right now. This is a horrible time to try to negotiate. But I do know that every time anybody says, oh, the next TV deal is not going to be as large, it always, always is as large. In 1992, baseball was a $1.2 billion a year industry. This past year, it was almost an $11 billion a year industry. So in less than 30 years, you've seen it grow from a little over a billion to almost $11 billion. So obviously, there, there is money there to be made. Um, and that's where the issue with the players is. The players look at that figure and say, wait, it was almost an $11 billion a year industry last year. So we don't want to hear the owners saying we don't have the money. And likewise, the owners are saying, yes, but in baseball, we get about 40% of our revenue off of day of game purchases, ticket sales, parking, concessions, uh, all of those, anything associated with day of game, they get about 40% of their revenue. Well, that's zero right now. And it's going to be zero if games resume. So the owners also have a valid argument. It, both sides have valid arguments. It's just a matter of getting to a compromise. That's always been the case. They've always been able to reach it, no matter how ominous things have looked at a certain time. And certainly right now it does look ominous. But look, Orlando, I had a, a, an owner tell me, do we really want fans to sit back and say, ah, we didn't have baseball in 2021. It wasn't so bad. That, I think, would be the worst thing that, that this sport could go through is not have a season I think the players recognize that also. Every player I've spoken to, and I've spoken to dozens, they all want to play. The owners want to play, but no one is going to give away something and be stupid to the other side. And that's, that's where these things, you know, often come to a head. It's like, okay, we, we, we're going to have to compromise here. Both sides are going to have to give. And that's, that's, that's where we're at. How about the Boris factor? Is that a factor right now with Scott Boris? It is. It absolutely is a factor. He's got a loud voice. He's got the loudest voice. He's got the, the most prominent players, and they're listening to him. That absolutely is a factor to be dealt with. And, um, you know, you're talking about the most prominent agent with the most prominent players on his roster who have loud voices and carry weight. So, there's no doubt that that is a factor. All right, so some of his players, let me run this example by you and tell me if we could have this in baseball this year because I'm with you to a certain extent. I still think this is all posturing, and eventually they'll come up to an agreement. They may not, either side may not be completely happy with it, but I think they will when it's all said and done. But let's just say, because this makes a lot, I try to explain to people because it doesn't, you know, for so many people losing their jobs and their businesses, they can't comprehend with this crap. But you think about this. I'm Mike Trout. Let's say I'm making $24 million a year. Now you want me 30, to tr- 37, by the way, okay. 37, okay. by the way. Okay. So <laughs> if he takes a 70% cut, then he's making what? Like 7 million or something? Seven. Like right. seven, like okay. seven. So think about this. I know it sounds crazy to you and me and the guy that lost his job, the woman that lost his job, the man that lost his business. But Mike Trout has seventy million already in the bank, and he says to himself, "Well, dude, why am I going to play for seven million this year? Risk getting COVID. I may have a respiratory issue for the rest of my life. It may affect my job. You know what? For seven million, I'm going to sit out. I'm going to say, hey, baseball, hey, Angels." Thanks, but no thanks. I'm going to sit out. And I know Joe Fan right now is saying, that's ridiculous, Orlando. But if you have $70 million in the bank, why would you risk set for seven? Wait till next year and you get back your $37 million again and you play again. Could those situations happen? Because I would understand a guy sitting out saying, you know what? I can pass up $7 million. It's not a big deal to me. There's no doubt that nobody will be forced to play. 
but if you don't play, you won't get paid. So that scenario absolutely exists. Here's another layer to Mike Trout's story. He and his wife are expecting their first child the first week of August. She's due the first week of August. He is on the record to me like a week and a half ago when I spoke to him saying, I am not missing the birth of my child. Of course. Look, if, if somebody goes away and they're supposed to be quarantined for 14 days before they return, that's, that's an issue. And Mike Trout has said, I don't care. I'm not missing the birth of my child. I am not going to miss the birth of my first child. So there, there, I've spoken to owners who have told me no player will be forced to play. We will not say you must play. Of course, there's always other players coming up from the bottom. And if you don't pay, play, you never know. Are you going to be Wally Tipped? You know, the, the famous first baseman for the Yankees who sat out a day. Lou Gehrig played for him. And Lou Gehrig <laughs> ended up playing the next 14 years in a row without ever missing a day off. So um, Mike Trout obviously will have a roster spot next year should he say, I'm not playing this year. But there are so many players who are not going to be in the same position. Right. The other thing is, look, let's say Mike Trout doesn't play at all this year or anybody doesn't play. The season, the season ended in September of last year. The next season won't start until April of next year. Who can really sit out 18 to 20 months without playing and not having their skills erode a little bit? That's, that's also a possibility. There is an erosion of skills that takes place, and you don't know if you're ever going to be able to get it back, uh, depending on your age especially. I, so, I, I, don't know about Mike be an, I don't know about Mike Trout. Do you, hit, do you see him hit that golf ball out of top no, golf no, no, and, no. And into course, the stratosphere? Of course. <laughs> of course. I'm, I'm just of having course fun. I'm just having fun. I'm just having fun. I'm just having fun. I know, I know. But uh, like I said, he is, he is in no danger of losing his roster spot, his spot in the lineup, none of those things. Um, but there, there's certainly a lot of other players who are. Um, and that's why I think they want to, they want, look, they're the ones taking the greater risk. The owners aren't the ones out there exposing themselves on a day-to-day basis with people that they don't know. And there are certainly ancillary people that take, that you, you come in touch with during the course of a day of a major league game. So they feel like they're the ones taking the bigger risk. Why should they receive the biggest cut? And that's, that's where, that's where, look, you, you had said a little while ago, that you see the scenario where n- no one's going to be happy no matter what, if they right. do come back, that yeah. probably, that probably would be a strong indication that compromise was met. Yes. If neither side is happy, then a strong compromise was met. And hopefully that is the case. Yeah. Uh, I'm with you. And one more thing before I let you if go. If one side is happy, then if one side is happy, then they, they got over on the other side. Oh yeah. They definitely, yeah, they definitely screwed over the other side and how twisted is it for us down here because I was really hoping for the Marlins season because think about it. If you have no baseball, Pedro, those poor young kids lose out a year of development. That sets up that sets the Marlins franchise back an entire year because you're in the process of developing an entire team here. And so this year, even if it's a half a year, it'd be so important for the Marlins. Yeah, uh, I've got a son who's a minor league pitcher. I, I know, I know the pain. Believe me, he should be right now at Double A, and he's not. He's home, and that's not the same. Throwing bullpens once or twice a week and playing catch—that's not the same. You're not developing. Is, is he with the A's and not getting paid, or is he with the Marlins and getting paid? <laughs> he's with the Red Sox. Uh, so so far, he's getting paid. He's but, getting paid, huh? You know, they're paying him four hundred dollars. Uh, four hundred dollars a week. That's you know. Hey man, at, le- at, not, at least at no. least they're living up to that response. I mean, it's sad to see what the Oakland A's owner is doing. You're a billionaire, and you can't spare you know a, a, a couple million or a million, whatever it is, it's going to cost you. It would be one point one million yeah. to pay everybody in the minor league system yeah, the rest of the year. That's nothing for him, man. Look, uh, our Panther yeah. owners are paying all their employees through the pandemic. Uh, the Marlins are paying their minor leaguers through August. I mean, I thought that was really classy. You know, well, that's on, the man. end of the minor league season. The minor league season ends on uh, right around uh, um, Labor Day. Okay, so that's 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 you know, it's usually that first week of September. So if you're getting paid through the end of August, that's basically ninety eight percent of the season, ninety nine. Yeah. Of the season. Oh yeah! Hey, listen, we ripped the Marlins enough. When they do good things, I got to give them love, man. Got to be fair with them, yeah. man. You know, give them a little love for that, man. But yeah. it's just, it's just yep. a shame to see like the Bruins owner and the A's owner not stepping up and helping their people out when they when they should be, man. It's just, uh, it's it's rough, man. 
It's rough. All right, Pedro. Yep, you are a stud, my brother. Thank you for taking some time. You stay safe out there, my man, and let's let's hope we get some baseball in this year. Orlando, un abrazo fuerte. You got it, baby. Un abrazo. You be good. All right, brother. Take care. There you go. Bye. That's mi hermano, Pedro Gomez from ESPN. Always enjoy having Pedro on, man. Super stud. Yes, he is.